in a universe full of Braxlings. We will understand them and not fear them. We will be the master of all Braxlings. What did we learn last time? In the last lesson, we learned about fractions called one-fourths. I ate one-fourth of the graham cracker. So how many did I not eat? You did not eat three equal fractions of the graham cracker. Since each fraction was one-fourth, you did not eat three-fourths of the graham cracker. There's no fooling you. Now let's talk about fractions called eighths. I hear the word eight in the word eighths. That's right. Eighths means we are going to break or divide a whole or entire something into eight equal parts or fractions. That means the parts are going to be smaller than if it was broken into halves in the fo in fourths. The last time we made fractions called fourths, we broke one half into equal parts. So one half of one half is one fourth. Correct. Let's look at this graham cracker. It is broken into fourths. If I break each part equally again, I will have eight parts. The number of parts or fraction has doubled from four fractions to eight fractions. We had four fourths and now we have eight eights. But we still have just one graham cracker, but now it is broken into eight equal sized parts. Fantastic. Now let's make this a little sweeter. I'm going to put chocolate icing on some of the graham cracker. What fraction of the whole graham cracker does not have icing? I see two out of eight parts do not have icing, so that must be two eighths. Pretty good. I think you're a master of fractions now. That's right. I'm the fraction master. So now I'm going to ask the question, what part of the graham cracker has icing? Six out of eight parts, or six eighths. Wrong answer. The correct response is, my part has the icing. Boy, I sure love icing. I should have seen that coming. However, you brought up a good point. I think three-fourths of the whole graham cracker has icing on it. What do you think? I think I want more than one whole graham cracker with icing on it.